And with that vaccine now being distributed to frontline workers, the wait is on for enough doses to achieve herd immunity. Infectious disease specialist and ABC News medical contributor Dr. Dodd Ellerin joins me now for more on this. Uh, Dr. Ellerin, break this down because this is one of those terms that we heard a lot about in the beginning of the pandemic related to whether or not we could achieve herd immunity with enough people getting the virus. Now we're looking at the hope of getting it through a vaccine. So can you start by just sort of explaining how herd immunity works? Yes, good morning, Diane. It's good to be with you. So a herd immunity is an important concept. It's reached when enough people have developed immunity through vaccination uh, to break the COVID chain of transmission. So we don't know exactly how much population immunity is enough, but we think that it's probably somewhere over 50 or 60 percent. That number varies, and it really depends on the infection you're dealing with, and it really depends on other factors as well. Where are you within your transmission? Are you having, uh, you know, uncontrollable number of cases? What season is it? Are people masking? But generally speaking, we think if more than 60% of the U.S. is immunized, and remember, that's close to 200 million people getting two doses at this point, then hopefully we'll reach herd immunity. Some like to use the term herd protection because what's happening is you have enough people who are immune in a group and you're really protecting the susceptible people, the people that aren't vaccinated for one reason or another, you're really preventing them from seeing the virus. That That's herd immunity. And, and so does that also include people who have recovered from COVID-19? Do they contribute to herd immunity or do they need to get the vaccine in order to do that? Right. Well, it probably does. Again, so one of the points that you're raising is what's the durability after natural infection? How long are you immune for? And for that matter, how long are you immune after the vaccine? We don't know these answers yet. With natural infection, it looks like for most people, it's probably, you know, over nine months, close to maybe close to a year at this point. So that's good news. But they probably do contribute partially to, to, to the herd immunity. But remember, the the Sweden model of just ripping off the Band-Aid and, you know, seeing if you can develop herd immunity through natural infection, that won't work. That will cause too many casualties. That experiment was done and it, and it failed. Yeah. You know, you also just touched on a question that I got on Twitter from a few viewers, which was about the, the length of the effectiveness of the vaccine. And you said it's not really clear, but do we know how this will work in the long term? Is this something we're going to need to get? every year, let's say, or you're going to need a booster shot every six months. Uh, how, how effective is it once you do get the vaccine? How long does that last? Well, we know how effective it is, okay? That we know, it's it's 95% effective, but that's obviously over the short term because we only have short-term effectiveness data over a few months. Uh, how long it will last, we don't know. That remains to be seen. We will learn that uh, over time. Um, but it does underscore the importance that we know that it prevents disease, but we still don't know how much overall uh, infection it prevents. We don't know yet how how much it's going to affect transmission. That's the reason why getting your vaccine is not a license to take off your mask. And I'm sure the reason why it's so important for us to continue these clinical trials so we continue to answer more of these questions as we go. Absolutely. I mean, this is a very unusual time right now, right? It, it, it's, it's, there's really this duality where we're in the midst of a pandemic of darkness and frustration and exhaustion as we're seeing cases rise, hospitalizations rise, and deaths rise. But at the same point, I truly believe that this is becoming a pandemic of hope with the COVID-19 vaccines and how safe and effective they are. A pandemic of hope. I wasn't sure I would ever hear you say that. Dr. Ellerin, it's great to talk to you as always. Thank you. You too, Diane. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.